at 7 o'clock. I call the meeting to order. Uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Westwood Planning Board meeting. I'm Brian Gorman and I will be chairing this meeting. The meeting is video recorded by Westwood Media Center. If anyone else wishes to record the meeting, please identify yourself so the audience is aware. Uh, seeing none. Um, as a friendly reminder, please turn off your cell phone ringers. The meeting will be civil and all people will be treated respectfully. This includes no clapping uh, and such. In the event of a disruption, the chair will give a warning the first time, and if it occurs again, the individual will be um, uh, discussed on how to deal with that. Uh, the format of the meeting will be when an item is called, the applicant will come forward to the podium to present their application to the board. The board will proceed to staff comments. The board members will ask questions to the applicant. For public hearing items, the public will be given an opportunity to comment. Items that are not a public public hearing, the opportunity for public comment will be at the discretion of the board. When it is time for the public comment period, the chair will call those wishes to speak to the podium to use the microphone. Once at the podium, please identify yourself by stating your name and address for the record. Please direct all comments and questions through the chair. All people will be given the opportunity to speak, but in the interest of time all and fairness, repetitive or off-topic comments may be cut short. Uh, Abby, are there any changes to the uh, agenda? No changes. Okay. And, um, and I just wanted to check, um, were the applicants noted, they, are they aware that we're one board member short due to absence? No, they're not. And, uh, uh, no. Okay. And just so that, um, and that board member wasn't able to uh, dial in, we have remote access, but that, um, that board member is not here, so we're a four-member board tonight. Um, so moving forward, um, the first item on the agenda is uh, 119 University Ave, uh, Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. So could the applicant please come to the podium and state your name and let us know um, uh, why you're here and such. Of course, uh, I'm Mike Fishman. I'm the general manager of Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza in uh, University Ave. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me tonight. Uh, our proposal is pretty straightforward. Um, as of right now, as you can see by the pictures on the bottom, we have a few uh, exterior windows that have photos behind them. Uh, there's actually a third one as well. Uh, but as you can tell by the pictures, uh, the photographs that we have behind there are becoming a little dilapidated. Um, what we've done in the past is we've paid to have the windows removed and you know either fix the pictures or put up new ones. However, it seems like every year uh, we've been having the same issue, whether it's because of the sunlight, humidity, uh, you know, so whatever it is. Um, so what we're proposing is to put up uh, printed window graphics over those uh, three exterior windows. Uh, none of them have, you know, our brand name on them. It's just generic stock photos relating to our, uh, you know, to our uh, design on the inside of the restaurant. Uh, but we feel that it'll be a better long-term solution and it'll kind of prevent some of the eyesore that when you first drive into uh, University Ave. So that would be the extent of my proposal. Great, thank you. Uh, Abby, are there any staff comments related to uh, this? Um, just to explain why this is here, um, we have um, in the sign section of um, 9.7 University Ave Mixed Use Overlay District, um, this uh, window signs can't be more than 20% of the glass. I think some of what you see in the existing photos aren't considered signs because they're not um, specifically promoting the business, so um, they're considered um, a, dis a window display. Um, so their new proposal is more related to their business and is covering more than that 20 percent. So it's considered a sign. Um, so signs cannot be more than 20 percent of um, the glass surface unless you approve it specifically under this section of the bylaw. It's, um, it's referred to as a project specific signage alternative package. It's where you consider it on a case-by-case -case business and um, you have to make a finding that there's no um, detrimental impact to traffic or safety or the development as a as a whole. Uh, is that all for? Um, That's the only comment I have. Is just kind of explaining what your view is. 
Um, I guess I can start. So when I looked at, so these are, I, I did a site visit, so I did a drive-by for, um, for the, the window. So this is only on University Ave. Correct. Uh, there's the one on the bottom left, that's the one that is a, uh, parallel to University Ave, and then the other two that we have are when you drive into the plaza. So when you take the right, it, yes. well, I guess it depends on what direction. And then once you pull into the parking lot, there's, there's no signage at Correct. all. Correct. Every other window we have is just a uh, dining room window. And as far as so the so the signs that well the the picture frames that are there so they're they're behind the behind the glass so it looks like they're set back about an inch or so. Correct. Um, would this be the same type or would this be uh, what is what is it made out of? So to my knowledge, it's just a vinyl window wrap. It would go right over the existing window instead of and the pictures would remain behind it, but you wouldn't be able to see them. Because the issue we've come across is that it's uh, a little costly to remove the windows and then put them back in every time we need to uh, replace the pictures back there, which in the four years that we've been open now, it's happened a few times, I believe. Yeah. Are those shades behind there? Is that? Nope. That is just uh, on the other side of that wall is actually our uh, prep kitchen. So there's no access to those windows from the inside of the restaurant. It's just a solid wall. Dave, do you have um, questions or comments? Uh, no, I think if I understand, it's uh, so you're, when you when those things fade, you actually have to remove the glass to get to the thing that's behind it, and so right. it sits there for a it long time and gets yellow. Yeah, when they yellow. designed it, it wasn't. Uh, I don't think they planned for them to ever be replaced or what have you. So every time they've done it, it's just been, you know, completely removing the window and then resealing it back up. And so what you do is you print this out on vinyl and stick that on the outside. Right. Is it going to? Will it fade on the outside? Do you replace it periodically, or how, how does that work? To my knowledge, those usually tend to last a while. Um, I mean, in my experience, the only time I've worked with these has been on food trucks, and you know, with the constant weather and scrubbing, we've never had to replace them on there. Um, you know, I'm sure over time we might see the same issue, but it won't be as much of a hassle to replace in the future as it would be for those pictures. Have we given? Um, we the planning board has reviewed a few other um, requests under this section of the bylaw. We haven't had a whole lot for windows. We had a similar one at um, Chipotle where it was like a checkered um, pattern on their glass um, adjacent to their kitchen as well. And Lifetime Fitness had like a um, Something similar it was like a vinyl installed it's on their really glass. Cool. So we've had at least you've had at least two. Okay. Um, what is life? To, I'm sorry. Continue, Bill. Sorry. Uh, I was just noticing because I did a drive-by site inspection, and uh, I was noticing two doors down from you um, in Starbucks, and they have a <clears throat> a full window display. So I didn't know if that was considered a signage. And do they it have probably is. I, for that? I know that opened before I was here, so I can't remember specifically that one coming before the board. So it may have been right before I, I started, because that, that, okay. that was one of the first businesses to open. But I know we've had at least the lifetime in Chipotle in the last four years. Right. Abby, what was the rationale for only 20% of the window to be? Um, I think the idea was that we didn't want um, every business to be covered with signs. We did want to encourage um, the open interaction for you to see into stores, um, kind of like, you know, encourage that storefront and the pedestrians, like, you know, walk in the inside and outside. And where we have seen these requests, like the Chipotle one, I think it was around where the um, kitchen is or, or where the staff is working. Um, I, I, I'm aware that if you have signs all over the place, they does look kind of ticky tacky, so to speak. Uh, so I understand. Not done. That this doesn't look terrible. Now, how will this look? Uh, did you have more questions? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. How will this look? So this is going. It looks like the the way that you on the top is where. So it's all vinyl, and it has the black lines. When that goes on, will it then have it look? Because it looks like the, the actual window itself has the panes on the outside, so it's not completely flat. 
Yeah, so the uh, the black lines, I believe, are just a cutout. Um, I had sent measurements over to the company of each individual window on the uh, set. So I believe they put the black lines in there just to divide where the pattern would be going. Yeah. To my knowledge, and what I'm going to hope that they do, is when they put them on, they are just simple cutouts that go over just the glass themselves and they yeah, keep yeah. the actual black lining okay. between the windows. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I do agree with Bill. There are, there are some businesses where they do do the... The larger advertisements on the window, and it can it's an it can be course. cheaply done, and mm -hmm. can sometimes not look great. Um, so what we're seeing here is what we're going to see. Yes, these are the final approved designs. We had a few that we chose from. We thought that these were the best out of the proofs that we had uh, received. Um, and as I said, this this is just for the windows that have no access. You can't even see in them to the restaurant. All the other windows we have will remain completely open. It's just the two that you see there plus the other one that I had sent over. Okay. Great. Uh, are there any other questions from the board? Um, are there any questions from the, the public? Sure, Frank. Should I get up? Please. Mm -hmm. I think there might be another microphone laying around that's here. The, yeah, that's the worst of the three of them. Yep. Fran Fusco, 20 Pine Lane. Um, my question is, is this only for University Ave having this kind of signage, as you say, uh, in windows? We do have um, a different section in the zoning bylaw, so it's a little bit different for University Ave. University Ave does have different sign regulations, and they are, um, in some ways, they're more strict, but then they allow the planning board this kind of alternative sign package approval where the underlying zoning elsewhere in town does does not allow that ability. Um, I can't remember what the percentage is so for window signs. So which is more signs. restrictive? I'd say University Ave is more restrictive, but it does allow this special permission from the planning board, whereas Section Six of the zoning bylaw about signs doesn't, on the planning board, doesn't have the review authority that you have at University Station. Sure. So we wouldn't see this kind of signage or uh, sales type of signage on like the new CVS in Islington? Um, well, that is under a different section of the zoning bylaw. That's under special permit as well. So they does have, um, let me check what um, that is. We do allow window signs, but it is usually tied to a percentage of coverage. Um. And Abby, uh, the lifetime window uh, cover, is that, is that in existence there today? I think so. It was like a branch pattern that was over the um, front okay. entry, if you remember. Um, I don't know if Dave was on the board at that time or not. Um, uh, I think that was before, yeah. It's like over the stairwell. I think that's what it is, the stairwell. Um, just looking for There's a section that the sign um, limits depend upon the length of the facade or something, but I thought that was at university. We, um, the length of the, or the size of the um, wall sign depends on the fr um, length of frontage that you have. For window signs, I'm just looking. Is there um, the company that you're that is doing the work for you? Do they have an example that they might be able to direct me to that I can see before if, before making a decision like this where it ends up being semi permanent or permanent? I think I'd like to see what what the product looks like that this company puts together? That's a good question. Uh, I'm honestly not sure what work they have done in the past. I believe in the packet we submitted was the actual quote from them. Um, yeah. We can always reach out to that company to see if there's any work they've done. Yeah. I know our new store in Natick used a lot of the similar graphics. I'm not sure if they use the exact same company for their designs or whatever, but that might also be a good example okay. of what this new layout looks like in effect. Because okay. they're one of our newer design stores. Sure. Completely different design from what we because yeah, I mean, what you what you presented here to me, it seems okay. It's not the the uh, like you said that it's not covering up 
uh, clear glass going through into the back where there are, where you see some nice settings. It, it is a wall. But I think I would like to see what the product is that this company puts together so so that I can feel comfortable with that type of a decision. And that's fair. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm not sure exactly what they've done. I do know typically our facilities department takes the selection process incredibly seriously when yep. picking these companies. Uh, I'm sure you know the company they went with, they probably went with for a reason, but I'm sure on the proposal there's probably a website of some sorts of past work they've done uh, that could be looked into. Okay. Um, and Abby, did you find anything for, um, for Fran? Yes, the window signs in the um, FMUOD, Flexible Multiple Use Overlay District, they do have different requirements. It's, it depends on the square footage of um, the facade, so they can allow um, up to 50 percent, I mean up to 50 square feet of window size per business establishment. But that was reviewed during the special permit process, so the, it can't be more than what the planning board reviewed at the time of your special permit. So what does that what does that mean? Or I don't believe they showed window signs, or they weren't covered because okay. they're much smaller uh, windows. Okay. Um, would anybody oppose that um, the request for me to? I was thinking that if we, if we, I, w I would like to see what this product looks like. Of course. Um, and if we just one more quick question, if we approve this. Can we approve it with a stipulation that in three years or five years or whatever seems reasonable that a sign is tattered or discolored that they would have to replace it? Replace it, yeah. You or could. remove. Mm -hmm. We've um, even done that for um, sandwich boards at Wegmans where we allowed yeah. something for a certain amount of time. Yeah, you, ha you could uh, have a condition for a certain amount of time or You've added language before of and, and um, replaced when necessary. Um, you do that sometimes with the parking lot line striping that fades after a while. So we'll say, you know, the parking lot shall be line striping shall be replaced when when needed. So you could add similar language to that. <coughs> it sounds like uh, Brian's requested um, a material sample. Design. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see that. And it's and even if there was a uh, a location where they were they were doing that at, um, I could drive to. to yeah, I can um, I can try to reach out to them and uh, figure that out just because I haven't even thought to look at that myself. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can probably the company's local, I believe. I'm sure we can probably uh, see if they've done something in the area that we could take a look at just for to make sure it's quality. Okay. That sounds good. Does somebody want to make a, uh, if there's nothing else? Um, do we motion for the phone? Do we continue? Yeah. Is it a hearing? What is the? Actually, it's not technically a hearing, but it sounds like, so the next meeting is continue July 23rd yeah. for the next meeting. Yeah, I mean, I can try to get a result by then if that's, uh, we can table this and just get a result for them if that works for you guys. But it's not a hearing, okay. right? Right. But we can, we'll put it on the next agenda, which is the July 23rd. So, do we make a motion? No, for that? actually, you don't formally have, have to. Okay. Okay. Thank you very okay. much for coming. Thank, Thank you guys for your chat. Thank you. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda, item, item number two, is 90 Brigham Way, Partners Urgent Care, Special Permit Public Hearing. Application for storage, use, and handling of materials in the Water Resource Protection Overlay District at the Urgent Care Facility. Hi. Good evening. Jason North, Executive Director with Partners Urgent Care. So um, as you mentioned, uh, we are looking for a special permit to um, store uh, and obtain and uh, utilize some chemicals on site that require a special permit according to your bylaws. Uh, just to, for a point of reference, we do have 10 urgent care locations throughout Boston. This will be number 11. This is the first one that we're putting inside one of our medical office buildings under the, uh, which is the Brigham Health building. So the Brigham Health is at 90 Brigham Way. Our address will be 100 Brigham Way. We are the uh, left-hand corner 
Um, what you see here is the path by which uh, the delivery today is for the special permit that was approved for Brigham Health for these same chemicals to be brought into their larger building. They have a two-story building. I'll just be in um, 3,000 plus square feet on the corner, so such a smaller unit. Uh, the driveway coming up uh, from University into Brigham Way around to the back of the building to our delivery, uh, where you see they park A is where um, you currently approved Brigham to park. Our, our deliveries would be the same. The only difference is, is the route once they come out of the truck they would come into the rear entrance of our facility. So as you see them coming to the sidewalk to the building, that is the entrance to the storage unit and delivery handling for Brigham Health. And then you would make uh, a right around the corner and we are the first door in the back of the building where we would accept our deliveries. And then inside we would be uh, storing just inside that door is our storage facility as well as environmental. So if any other chemicals that aren't considered under this from a hazard standpoint, but we'd still manage all of our chemi chemicals the same way. So the request today is to, um, for a special permit for these specific chemicals. Um, this was reviewed by um, uh, the uh, chief of uh, fire. Um, they've come out, they've taken a look, they reviewed the spill plan, the emergency plan as well. Um, I know that there were uh, some comments back and forth that we were able to answer. And then the conditions that have come through, um, we are able to meet those. So there were uh, nine conditions, uh, which include the same process that Brigham Health currently follows now. And since they are part of our parent company partners, uh, I'm able to have access to their information and follow the same process. So I really get to benefit from them coming, going through this experience already. Um, the only other thing I would mention is we are also, so to the point I mentioned uh, about making sure we're able to meet all of the conditions, and that is, of, of course, applying for the uh, any state license local. We're also uh, licensed by the Department of Health, so DPH. So once this is approved, uh, then I'll get my um, Department of Environmental Protection for the bio uh, waste handling as well as chemical waste handling. So that's who comes and picks up, pick up any of the uh, bottles that are empty. Um, they're disposed of through BioServe. That's our vendor. And um, then DPH uh, will also do an inspection as well. And I'll, I'll be licensed under DPH to uh, have the clinical facility. Is there anything else, uh, any other part of your, you complete with your presentation? I, I, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, just the answers here. I think we are finalizing construction, so we are substantially complete as of next week. Uh, after 4th of July, we'll be able to do the final inspections to get our certificate of occupancy. We plan to do installation of equipment and furniture the mid uh I want to say July 24th week, and going for uh, the Department of Health, the DPH uh, inspection for licensure on August the 12th. Right. right. That's the plan. Yeah, it's a nice facility. I drove by it, so it's, it's really nice. Um, so your complaint, Abby, are there any comments from the staff? Uh, no, um, no concerns. We did circulate the application to um, the various boards review staff. Um, you did have a memo in your packet from um, Weston and Sampson. They're the consultant for Denham Westwood Water District, and they did um, submit that that memo to you. And they didn't have overall didn't have any um, concerns um, that they thought the plan that was submitted, the procedures that were in place, um, would prevent. Um, any contamination or any spills. Um, and then um, no concerns from the other review staff that was um, conservation agent, the um, building commissioner, the fire department and health department so that they would be doing their own um, inspections prior to occupancy. Um, so 
it sounds like the fire department has already um, gotten in there, but the Board of Health will complete their review and sign off prior to occupancy too. So no other outstanding um, comments. I just prepared the um, suggested nine um, kind of standard operating um, conditions that the applicant had, had mentioned to when you get to that point. Uh, I just had a few questions to, to lead it off. Uh, so the, as far as the spill response uh, team, do you have a, a direct contract with that spill response? So if you do get beyond that, that major level that... So my facility, would, I don't see how we would get beyond that major level. So what we actually have, um, we have nine exam rooms and uh, they're in small bottles, less yeah. than a quart. So each box that, they, it comes in a box, and then we have four to five bottles of each of the chemicals. There's only four chemicals here. So we, what we have is a um, spill kit, and then we would be utilizing, I have an agreement with the Brigham that if, if we were to go above and beyond, if there was any issue, that they would also support us, because they're the ones that have sort of more volume, I would say, sure. so to speak. And um, again, they're on site every day. If you look in the spill plan, we do have all of the vendors that we would need to reach out to. So they're already associated with them. I actually was able to um, benefit from their spill plan and um, pretty much mirrored it and we'll be able to follow suit since we're under the same health uh, uh, partners uh, LLC. Okay. Banner. And so what is the, what's the largest volume? Is it? Uh, I would say between the uh, the containers, we'd probably have a gallon of each chemical at any given time. So from a par level standpoint, once we are down to three bottles, we would order the the other two bottles to be at five bottles of right. each of the chemicals that we would be looking at. And some of the chemicals aren't in bottles themselves. So for instance, um, the quality control kit and the rapid the rapid strep kit, there isn't really any fluid left in there after we do the test. So it would only be when they were sitting on the shelf or if they were, as they were coming into the building. Okay. And right now, the um, Brigham has already covered the uh, drain. So the spill uh, are already, the drain covers are already on. Um, so it's not like, you know, we're expecting a delivery or whatnot. So when they do come in, they're already covered, so. So are they permanently down? The they put them up. down and they pick them up when I guess it rains and they know that there's no That's issue right. outside because yeah. they're there every day. Of the other 10, how many have the same type of procedure? Because uh, so so we have so this is a much more robust um, to to come for special permit, but we've always had a policy for a spill. So each uh, center has a spill kit. And those spill kits that come from the vendor themselves um, that we utilize to get all of our chemicals from. And so that way, it's basically one, uh, one bucket with the, um, the hazardous uh, signs that go out and, um, and then the steps to you call the uh, administrator on call. And of course, you know, man manage the spill immediately, call the administrator on call, and then as you see in here, there's the steps on who else to call. Sure. But we, the 10 centers um, have not had any spill issue, and I checked with uh, Brigham today, they haven't had any issue since they've opened either. So no, no recovery or uh, need to utilize this. No, the, um, so the spill cover that's outside. Um, do Covers the, the drain. The drain, do other, any of the other locations have the same permanent? Yeah, so that's a very conservative yeah. Yeah. Um, approach, which is great because it's right. on top of our Yeah, watershed. new approach, um, but I, I got to, like I said, learn from the Brigham Health who went through this process, so right. they've got us covered. And no we're worries. utilizing the same, sorry, we're utilizing the same maintenance and uh, folks, so okay. they're, again, very familiar with that, so I'll, I'll be benefiting from their experience. They've been there, I think, since October of last okay. year. And you said the rain, has there been any issues with pulling the drain cover off and putting it back on no. when it does rain? No, in fact, there is a second drain cover closer to us and we were looking at whether or not we'd need to get a cover for that. And so that will be part of when um, the other inspector, inspectors walk through. Um, so we're just gonna purchase a second one so we can put it out if for any reason someone thinks that we should. It seems to be so far away from the sidewalk that, like I said, they you know these come from, so FedEx, so they're basically the FedEx delivery, um, the four uh, 
uh, what do you call them, uh, quart containers would be in a uh, corrugated box. Okay. And then um, just one other question with the, so the, the plan originally had mentioned oil. And so is there, is there any oil in like the, uh, the elevator shaft or? So we don't have an elevator shaft, but they do. Um, okay. So that's why it's on their original. Okay. Um, but we are just on the first floor in, um, in that uh, small section. We don't have any equipment um, that has oil um, or that we would be putting oil into, so we wouldn't be maintaining or replacing or filling oil. And then what about a generator? There's, there's, we there's don't have outside. a generator. Either. Okay. Um, Dave, do you have any questions? Nope. I just have one. Um, when we approved this back in October, Abby, um, they said there was a designated area. You, you're using the same loading area that Brigham uses. Is that correct? So, um, if you, might, do you I'll come ahead. over here and show you. Okay. Can you, can you take Bring the microphone. Microphone. Um, So, their loading dock is right here. Mm -hmm. So, if you see the two doors that open, so the p truck parks here walk here and they enter, they'll have to walk here, walk uh, around the corner and enter in this door. So we're completely isolated from the rest of the building. So we don't have any interior doors that open up into Brigham Health. So you don't have a uh, parking spot that's specific for you. you? You're parking right in the... So the, the patient parking is specific up here. I mean for that deliveries. No. There is this, is this this delivery area right here is actually um, the same spot that, that was approved originally, and we're asking our drivers to, to go to the same spot. Okay. But That's it's not a uh, loading dock. It's, it's, okay, because I drove by there, and there's, yeah. I mean, so what happens if you can't get in there? So this is an open space right here. There's no parking allowed, that's and that's where the truck would just literally stop in the driveway. And that's what they do. If there's if there's cars here, they stop in the driveway. That way, their back door opens right off of where there's no obstructions. Are you, are you talking about the fire lane? They're gonna utilize the fire lane there. Right here. Yeah. Or drive aisle. I think I think it's is the drive aisle the parking lot drive aisle. That. So you're ta So this is the driving pattern. So that you would go in and out. So they would have to park right here in one of these spots or one of these spots. But there's not a designated parking uh, that I'm aware of. This right here is the entrance, so it's a sidewalk. It's just if you're going through all these, you know, precautions, mm -hmm. especially because of the the wells. Yeah. If they can't park there and they have to park somewhere else, then they have to carry the hazardous material. Right. Through other areas. So I mean, couldn't they have an area that's designated for them to park in? So I would go back to the Brigham and find out what they've what they've been doing uh, because, like I said, they've been doing this I guess for almost the year, um, and see if they've had any issues or if if they have designated a parking spot. Yeah, I don't see it. There's no signage down there. So. No, there's not. And I did. And see I'm had, I'm adding signage for uh, the patient parking up front. That's okay. part of the DPH license requirement. Um, but from a delivery standpoint, I think the only other thing they would do is, is pull into that spot that's not a parking spot. Right. So I did see them parked in the fire zone, which is not appropriate. No. So I'm um. thinking um, maybe they can put a sign up for deliveries just to reserve a spot for them. Because it's, mm -hmm. I mean, if, they, if they're, we're covering the drains and yeah. you got to park, you know, around the corner, then you have to cover more drains. So that's a Brigham issue, I guess. It would be a landlord issue. Yes, Brigham is the property owner. Yep. Again, we're very friendly since we work for the same company. Yes, you do. <laughs> They're going to be a good landlord for me. Um, I mean, I think the plan's great. Yeah. Uh, you went over and above. Well, thank you. So. I, I had help. <laughs> um. I have a few more. Mm -hmm. um, so the, uh, do you know if the, is the pH neutralized when, in the so are there floor drains in the the building? Are there floor drains in the building? There would only be in the um, environmental services, so they where their uh, mop, mop would be. 
And where is that? That's going to be in their closet, environmental services closet. And where is that on the... Um, the that is... Um, So environmental services is this closet here. See the X? That's their um, sort of a pan with sure. where they can clean out the mops. Okay. And do you know if the, uh, if the discharge that goes down the drain is that is that processed at all before it goes? Uh, that I don't know. That I don't know. I know that um, the plumbing and the build out of course, was for the whole building. So those requirements for the building had to be met for our, our suite as well. Yeah, I can't remember what that was. Um, that hearing was a while back. Um, and again, I think if you, uh, from a DEP standpoint, I'm on the lowest scale. Like for instance, they were questioning why I would need to get my a DEP for these chemicals. Um, and so I just mentioned, you know, the process that I was going through here. Um, but uh, again, the volume is, un is very small. Okay. From, a, from a liquid standpoint, we don't sure. carry that much liquid. And then there were, there were some comments from uh, Weston and Sampson for the spill response and containment plan, uh, particularly with the, like you had mentioned, the, the 10 gallon, you don't expect that type of a spill, uh, but it's defined there. That's the threshold for major. Right. Um, did you update the spill response plan and containment plan based on that comment? From that memo from from the 10, ten gallon yeah so it, it references oil which right. is more specific to Brigham right so what I'm wondering is did you did you update the spill response and containment plan no there we didn't see any need to change our plan since we didn't have any of the volumes um, or oil that um, was commented on it seems like they were they were interested in that uh, I'm just reading the statement here Yes, yeah, so I, I think it's just the threshold. So it's uh, your plan talks about more oil, which is relative to Brigham, mm -hmm. uh, but also states uh, that a minor spill is noted as a volume less than 10 gallons. And I think that that prompts a different type of response. So if you had a grade three, mm -hmm. less than 10 gallons, is that considered a minor? spill so from our environmental services reviewed this said we don't carry enough to be considered anything other than minor because sure. we don't have enough volume of uh yeah it's just my understanding that what the difference between a minor and a major means the type of response right so would the response be different depending upon what that spill is whether it's uh, one gallon or so for instance if it if if it there was enough that it couldn't be contained or if that if it went further than you know the immediate area that would require a different response but what we, what i was told is we don't have enough volume that it would move from a room to another room or Got seep it. through yeah, yeah. Uh, any of our surfaces that okay. we're putting down okay and then the other question is where is the nearest uh floor drain so everything is contained where it says B yes so, so those are storage areas the the only floor drain that we do have is right below right when you enter so below that B in the second in the next room that's where the mop so drain that's is. close to the delivery close to the um, janitorial supply cabinet I guess we call correct it. and then the storage Would that floor drain ever be covered? It seems like it's close to. It's in its own contained room. Um, so there wasn't a plan to cover it. Yeah. Um, but if there was a need to, there, that's you know, just like we would cover outside, we could cover that yeah, drain as well. It, so my understanding, so it's great that you guys are being very concerned about outside and keeping the, uh, the drains covered right. essentially permanently unless there's 
rain and then you have to uncover <laughs> it. So I, I mean, this is a great plan again. I echo that. Um, and I know in a normal circumstance, the covers are nearby in the event of a spill. Right. So the spill, um, the spill kits would be in um, room B. So they would actually have the spill kit where the chemicals were being housed. So if something were to happen, if they dropped it and they needed to clean up the chemical, the spill kit would be in the same room. Sure. Now, would you, uh, for that, for that down, for the drain in the floor in that first room in the left, bottom left corner, mm -hmm. um, if there was to be a cover, would that be set up similarly that you would for the outside? We have it nearby. Right. Just so just like a shower drain or a tub drain, you could right. leave it until you needed to use it and you could right. pull it up when you needed to run the water through it. Yes. Is that possible? Yes. Okay. That doesn't even require any construction. It's gotcha. something I could purchase and put as part of our spill protection plan. And then would you also add that to the to the training itself, to the Yes, yeah, so environmental services it will be the same folks who um, are doing the Brigham. So I would uh, do the training with my environmental services folks. Uh, that closet is reserved for the cleaning for not my staff. The staff go through a separate training, um, but of course I can inform them of, of the other training. They go through the training of, of course, you know, working within the facility, accepting all of the chemicals from the uh, delivery truck, so all the supplies and anything that comes through from the delivery, and then uh, in spill response as well. Now, with regards to Debbie's comment, which I, I think is a good one for the, the deliveries, what will, what is the solution there? How do we how do we so, find an answer to that? Uh, so I work with um, Dan, uh, CBRE, who manages the property, and as well as Cindy, who is considered my landlord. Um, she's the vice president of Brigham Health. So I'll just let them know that we need to identify a designated space, and they can I'd work on that for us. My construction guys are there, and they're restriping for the new, so new spaces for, for my parking. So I'm sure we can work out something. Um, I don't know if that needs to come back. If, if we're going to designate a space, I don't know what that requires right. from here. Yeah, because it is sort of tight down there when, you, when you're coming down. It's not a, um, you can't fit three cars down there. Uh, and then I have one other specific question with regards to, in the supply co closet, it talks about a secondary storage. Is the room considered the secondary storage, or are the chemicals on top of it? Bad idea, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no worries. That's never happened. So secondary storage would be in the exam rooms. So for instance, if we have, uh, so one of the rooms is a procedure room. So that's where, like for instance, uh, looking at a particular chemical, The potassium hydroxide, there would be one bottle in the procedure room. The rapid strep kit would be um, a kit that you would bring to an exam room. So that's why they would consider it, it would be in another location. So that's why I called it out as a, as a. So in the storage room, the chemicals, are they just sitting on flat shelves? Correct. Would it be possible to add secondary containers within that room so if there was a leak from that shelf, it just doesn't hit the floor and then? Yeah, so what we can do is put them in what's called basins. So just uh, the buckets. So we could put them in the bucket on the shelf. That's not, uh, that's not difficult at all to do. Um, and then Yeah, and then uh, the, I believe there was hydrochloric acid was one of the items, I'm sorry, hydrogen peroxide. Yes. What is the concentration of that? Uh, that will be on. The spec sheet was in the packet, I just don't have it printed end. out. I was just wondering if it was less than 30%. Hydrogen peroxide, household. Storage. 
I want to say that's 70 30, but I'm not seeing it on my sheet. I can't say for certain, but um, I think it's the same as the rubbing alcohol, which is 70%. And the 70% is? The height, the, the sodium. And then on. If you look at sterosis, it actually spells each one of them out between one and five percent of each of the different and that's the other uh, chemical that was called out as uh, considered hazardous one of the chemicals within there and I'm not familiar with all of the chemical you know byproduct you know, with the actual chemical names I'm more familiar with the actual and then the oxygen tank is that is that secured by chain how is that it's a we so they come on a, a cart and so the cart it then has a, uh, a looping mechanism that okay. secures it to the rolling wheels, uh, and then stands it up. Straight. And then the other, th the, uh, the again, the drain outside. When it so you talk about when it rains. What about when it snows? So like once the winter comes, is that how is that handled? The, appa apparently, um, the folks from Brigham Health have a process they go through every day. Um, because there's even um, questions about, you know, they, they told me they have a certain chemical that they're allowed to use if they need to do any melting of the snow. Right, so right, right. they're going to manage all of it. I don't have to, as the, uh, as the tenant, I get to benefit from the guys who are. Yeah, and how do we make sure that, that that cover is, how often is that uh, essentially tested, uh, replaced? So I know that there's a daily process that they go through to verify what cover is on, okay. what cover is not on. They're doing that with my uh, tarp over my uh, dumpster right now with construction. Yeah. So. And Abby, is that under our, the town's jurisdiction to do random checks on, because this is our pretty important cover, so um, how do we know that the, the inspectors that are looking at our, the, that it's not worn down on the edges and... Um. For the, sorry, for the dumpster? For the outside drains. Outside. Oh, the outside drains? Yeah. The drain that they keep covered essentially mm -hmm. permanently, minus when it's raining and then when it's snowing, they have to shovel it off and yeah, I, put it back again, down. This is, this is where. So I'm just wondering, like, so they're, they're self-checking. So um, well, we do. is that something that we could check, so? Well, we have the um, like various inspections that were required in the operation and maintenance plan, and there's a series of checks that have to be done and submitted um, annually, like yeah. cleanings and stuff like that. So that's when those are reported at that time. Otherwise, it's if we do go out there for another reason, we would see. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's not but something that our board of health would ever get involved in. Um, if there was an issue, uh, if we were notified, yes, we would okay. check it. Like, it. if we've seen an issue, we would contact them. Okay. okay. That's it from my, and then of course all the all the waste is um, collected inside. Yes. So you have your biohazard waste baskets. That's uh, point out by D. So each room has their bio waste basket. Room D is where it's stored, and that's where um, the uh, hazardous waste is all kept and then picked up uh, from our vendor. And that's where we receive the manifest that they picked it up. So that's where any of the empty bottles where the chemicals were would be placed in, yeah. in that room. Okay. And then the, the so one of the four chemicals that were, um, that were highlighted uh, was a cleaning solution. Is that the solution that's used to mop up the floors? I believe it, it was the the one that's the sterosis um, enzyme cleaner. Yes. That. Uh, that's the one that essentially comes in four liter. Yeah, yeah, and it's got many different chemicals in it. Is that the? Is that what's going to be used for for mopping? Eight ounces of material, eight gallons of water. 
I believe I, I, that one I couldn't tell you. Um, it's one of the chemicals that the cleaning company uh, said they're utilizing, and it's the same that they're utilizing in the Brigham building, so that's why we said we would use it as well. Uh, but yeah, I remember that on that sheet. I know. It came through. And since we're not open, I don't know. And I would imagine that uh, what I want to avoid uh, is I know that when some places are cleaned, they end up using mops, and then you mop it up, and then some savvy cleaner, because uh, I've seen it, I've, you know, back in the day yeah. working where you, you then grab a squeegee, and then you squeegee down the hallway. Oh. So yeah. uh, I was just wondering, is that the chemical that will be poured down the drain in B? And that's where sort of my question comes with the... Yeah, they, if, it, if it was one that wouldn't be allowed because they're covering drains, then no. Because, again, this is the same process that the Brigham Health yeah. has gone through. And so that's why I said I would mirror that. Um, and the Brigham, have they been... Are they open and using... 100% uh, of their space. Okay. Because that would be an interesting question to find out... Um, how it's been used in sure. an actual, in the live setting, right. to sort of learn from that. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of employees to be trained here, uh, and I, and I would imagine that's that, is that a vendor that they yeah they sub out to. So we um, we sub all of the building maintenance and um, facility cleaning to uh, CB Richard Ellis CBRE. They're a national firm. And they do a, all of our buildings within partners, so they manage the entire partners, MGH, Brigham, this building, my centers as well. Yeah, because a lot of these, the, the unfortunate thing was when you, when you have items like this, it's, it's a lot of self-regulating. So you have somebody who's mopping the floor, mm -hmm. and then they're not going to tell on themselves. Right. And they, some do, but... Uh, I can imagine that if somebody's mopping the floor and they decide to grab a squeegee or what have you, I'd be I'd be interested in what that practice is like. Um, and that that's the chemical that's in the largest form and probably used the most, um, and the one that's most likely to go uh, down the drain mm -hmm. uh, because it is that intended for the mop and then to be treated through sewer waste. Yeah, I think the only probably saving grace for me on this is I'm uh, even my interiors um, hallways are uh, industrial carpet. The only thing that's a solid surface floors are the labs and the exam rooms, procedure rooms. Um, we're for more of a retail type environment, urgent care, walk in, sort of that customer service easy yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Um, so I'm not as, although I have all the clinical licensure and all of that, I have a lower sort of acuity and from a hospital type or medical office type setting and um, volume is about uh, we're, we're anticipating once we ramp up about seven eight months in we'll be at 36 patients a day so it's not a high volume yeah. place either and we'll be open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah, it's so great it to have this type of facility sort of spreads it out a little bit as an option for urgent care To Brian's point on the on the company that does the cleaning, are yes. they trained in hazardous yes. materials? And yep, they are. They are trained because um, even the fire marshal was asking some of those questions because sometimes even two cleaning solutions put together then becomes mm -hmm. toxic. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, um, CB Richard Elias works um, with certified vendors, and then they have their own orientation. And then with this, I'll be doing orientation with my staff on just the different protocols that may be a little bit different from our other 10 locations. Um, but the policies and procedures are just a little bit more robust here than they are at other sites. Now, I'm, I'm <coughs> new to the planning board, so I wasn't involved in the, in the initial uh, Brigham and, uh, and Women's uh, and, uh, building. Um, and this is on our water supply. That's what I understand, yes. yes. So <laughs> we have to be Very really protective. careful, kind of. Uh, so 
I haven't had a chance to do this, but I didn't know if we had a chance to do a site inspection, a walkthrough to see what actually happens with these chemicals. So I know the fire marshal uh, is out there quite often and the chief of police. So I met with uh, the fire marshal and someone else, um, uh, Cindy Peterson, who is um, the VP of Brigham Health and made the introduction and, and we walked through the evacuation plan, the spill plan and whatnot together. Um, they do walk the building and then we also, uh, the building has quarterly uh, uh, fire evacuation drills and whatnot. So they really have partnered um, and, and like I said, they reached out to me even before I came here to make sure that I put the plan so in place. Uh, objectionable to the planning board taking a peek? I can't imagine. You know, not, for, not from my perspective. I, I'm sure they would welcome it. Come see Brigham Health. It's beautiful. And once we get open, <laughs> August. Yeah, the, if that's the case, would you be able to provide that other information uh, that was asked, sort of like the sort of find out about the how the Steris is used on their yes. side? Mm -hmm. um, Especially like that that squeegee situation, um, which it can be like I haven't I haven't seen the floors to see what they. Um, yeah, you couldn't squeegee down. Like I said, I have carpet. They couldn't <laughs> they couldn't squeegee down the carpet. <laughs> um, that would be a problem. Um, well, first thing to address. Good, that's a good thing that you have. Yeah. That. that's great to hear. Um, but yes, I can I can find that out okay. um, and and have that sent over. I think this is. Uh, uh, I work with Dan Burke, um, who's uh, part of CBRE, and he's responsible for managing the entire building. Okay. And then I just have another question, couple questions. I think that you, it had to do with the, the draining system itself. Um, so from that, the one that I'm concerned about is that it's the room right next to B, that, that downspout. Environmental service room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you said there's a floor drain and then there's a, um, a sink. So to find out where that drain goes out to. So there's this three options. One is the environment, which is unlikely. Mm -hmm. um, although we did, there was a mistake in a building in town where it did go into the environment, they didn't hook it up. Um, but in, if it goes into an in-house uh, waste neutralizing mm -hmm. um, or directly to the sewer. Okay. And I know all that was approved before, but I just don't have that information sure. handy. And I know that was part of the original thing. Okay. Yeah. And then also that I, I want to check also to see if that, that threshold of 10 gallons for a miner, if that needs to be changed. Uh, so I'll, I'll reach out to, I'll have Abby reach out to that Weston and Samson to see if, because they, they highlighted it and I just don't know if, how important that was to change that because I even though we're talking about smaller volumes so that will be um, but we can deal with that sure. Abby is there a way um, we had a number of ideas come up here that those could be incorporated into conditions for this like a condition about working with the landlord for the parking situation and the um, uh, yeah. Basins for the containers and the shelves. Yes, I walk I, through all that stuff. Could we? Yeah, I think you could. Um, you know, have, add, expand on your conditions to include to designate one of the um, parking spaces as a loading and loading area in the back with um, signage. Um, to add the basins and the storage room as a um, for the backup spill containment. Yeah, so like right um, near it, that one. And then you talked about also the. Um, the secondary storage in the closet for the in storage room B. Oh, that that wouldn't be a condition. That would be part of the spill prevention plan. So we'll update the. So the plan would have to be updated. Update with the that. spill prevention plan. They update the spill prevention plan to show what. So the inter the interior floor drain. Floor drain, be covered. And the secondary. Spill containers, is that what they're? Secondary vessel, secondary container in room B on the plan. Room B. Covered. What's that? You want them covered? No, so essentially, like, so in B, 
Right now, the chem, as it stands, the chemicals would be on a shelf. Mm -hmm. Right, they would um, be in a basin. Okay. But now yep. they'll be in a basin, so mm -hmm. if, if a bottle tends yep. to be broken, then it would just spill into that and not leak onto the floor. And then you mentioned that there weren't any issues in the Brigham, but if you could um, ask again to see if since they've been open, has there been any, any uh, reports? So there have been none, so I asked okay. today. There we go. And um, we got an email back. Um, I think a Abigail and I both got the yep. email from Cindy Peterson stating that there have not been any issues. They do uh, track each delivery on a daily basis, and there's a log with the manifest for the uh, delivery and uh, pickup of uh, any waste. Yeah, that's great. And I'm really happy to hear that that, that covers on all the time. <laughs> Because it's true, the other other spots they don't have them. Yeah. Even with the large large I think they volumes. They found it was just uh, better just practice. It. Yeah. Um, because as much as you tell the driver what time to be there, they get there ten minutes before you're out there, or the, you know. So, I think they just make it a practice to keep it covered. Um, yeah. That's great. I haven't seen those drains covers. Can they get damaged by plows if you keep them on there all the time? I would imagine. Yeah. I would imagine, but they're easily they're. Um, like a rubber matting that goes, uh, you know, goes into the grate and then around it. Um, That's great. But uh, I think they've already replaced some already. <laughs> it's only been a year. I think Cindy really takes this seriously. I think you know, even from the first round of getting the place open and then putting the plan together. So she's really coached me through and provided me a lot of information and people to make sure that as a new tenant, I would be welcomed and get my, get my stuff together in order right away. And then who should we ex in expect to see when we come for uh, the interior site visit? Uh, would it be you or? So if it's with Brigham, so I'll have to, I'll get with Cindy to find out who she'd want to make sure is there, um, you know. Um, and myself, I mean, I'd be happy to show you our place. We're That's still right. under construction. I don't have a f all my floor down yet, so. We're still in a hard hat zone. That's great. I don't know anything else. Are there anything else from other board members? No, just to, do we have a date or can we make a date as to do the inspection or do you want us just to, uh, we can. So, so again, it, it's not my property, so I can't make that date. Okay. Unfortunately, right. but I'm, I'm sure she'd welcome, you know, okay. to put it to organize a date that she, I'm sure she'd want to be there. Right, so you'd okay. want to coordinate a, a date where you can um, um, you know, get the approval and have um, at, the owner it, be then, there. Then get the approval after we do that. I think we want to get it first. And we've done that before where, you know, uh, it's, not in, it's not a meeting, so you go in, you're uh, you have, may have some questions. Right. I mean, usually planning board only inspects the exterior of a site, the outside of a site. So this is uh, this well, would this be is different. On our, this is on our, on our water resource. Basically, we drink this water, we bathe with this water. Yes. So we just want to make sure yeah. <coughs> that we do everything correctly. And it's and it's built. Yeah. Uh, are there any comments from the public? I guess a motion to continue unless there's something else. I was thinking with those conditions yeah. that we could yeah, be. Yeah, we started with one, so. So if she's adding the conditions, including a condition for a site uh, visit, what I'm thinking is that if you have all those conditions, you, we could approve this, you know, subject to those conditions, and that way it would not have to be postponed to another You're going to approve a plan without, what's the purpose of a site visit if you've approved it? The condition of what? Well, it's uh, a lot of things we've approved that are um, it's subject to an administrative review of something. Um, so like we would a lot of times say, um, Abby's going to review this, and if everything's OK, it's, it's fine. So yeah. I think that in a similar way, we could say the condition is that we get to do a site visit. And, and if we find anything, then it's, you know, it's no, it doesn't satisfy the condition. So then we have to come back. and. Right. So, if I, so usually prior to occupancy, um, 
um, the last to sign off on the occupancy department is a building department, but all the other departments have to sign off. So I review applications on behalf of your planning board approval. So I go through and make sure all that any conditions are met prior to sign off. Um, so this would be, these would be one of the things I would check to check that the signage, the delivery signage was installed. Yeah. That you went the, on your the, site that visit. That is strange to do a condition that there's a site visit, and then if you don't see anything at a site visit or you don't have. Well, it's it's not. Um, that seems strange it, to me. Well, the, she's saying that a lot of times it would be subject to her inspecting things. This is we're getting hands on involved in it. So the same way that she might right. object to something, board members could object, and then sure. the condition is not satisfied. So. Yeah, but there's a few more things in addition to that too so I don't I see where you're trying to like let's get let's get ahead uh, but it's uh, I think this is the first hearing um, well I guess my perspective is that we went through when before this board we approved the stuff for the Brigham and went through all those chemicals and everything and I'm looking at this as an incremental um, adjustment with some additional conditions to make sure that it's okay so I'm not I'm not seeing that it rises to the level that we would need to postpone it, you know, that we're not expecting to find anything. We're not expecting that there's going to be some problem. If there is, then we can, you know, then the condition is not satisfied and we have to have it addressed and come back and, and all right. I mean, we can structure it that way, but I guess I'm going with the, what do we gain by um, holding off to another meeting to approve this? I. I'm not comfortable approving a plan if we, the previous the previous situation we didn't have something that was essentially built where we could go in and see the closet, see the drain, see the uh, see the sink. It, I've never seen a condition that says it's conditioned upon uh, doing a site visit. I've never well, seen that I, that's before. true because I don't think we've done interior site visits before. We have the other. We have the fire chief. We have the board of health. We have the different um, staff who are responsible for those for those details. And so it's um, it's unusual to be doing the the site visit. Yes, but I don't think you know if, if that's unusual, then you can have. But think about this, Dave. The, they weren't uh, thinking about the secondary container in the B room that I brought up tonight. So now those chemicals are more safe in room B because of my question. The floor drain in the janitorial closet is now safer because I asked the question of the drain being covered. So those were things that were, that you had your routine review by safety and they didn't, they didn't see that. So I feel it's my job on the board, especially considering this is on our watershed, to do it right. And so I don't want to cut any corners. Uh, I think it's the building's built. I think it's a good idea to go uh, check it out. Maybe you might see something else. Maybe that drains in a, in a peculiar spot in that room where the cover isn't going to work. So you might have to come up with a different solution. Well, I think, um, but Abby, wouldn't something like that happen? And if you saw something like we've approved things where they're supposed to plant a bunch of trees and the trees aren't planted, and so then it's, it doesn't get approved. Right. Um, so I wouldn't sign. So essentially, I wouldn't sign off on it. But we're talking about hazardous thing. chemicals. We're not talking about trees. This is. I, I don't know. I don't know where you're coming from, Dave, because I've I never don't know seen, either. I mean, I've it never seen seems a like condition. a pretty straightforward that thing here. That condition is strange to We've me. We've got four chemicals here, which are in 32 ounce containers. The largest one, I think, which is its enzymatic cleaner. Um, there's one of your, not, one of your I don't think you'd be too careful. This is our water supply. I know, and that's, it, it, the, that's so strange. environmentally. I think if really we had an environmental issue, then we should have had raised that at the when we approved it for the well, bridge. Let me ask the applicant. Oh, what I is the if this our next meeting is towards the end of July? What does that do to your timeline? I mean, it, it's probably pushing me out a month, so that would mean not opening till mid-September. Right. Because I, I I can't do a uh, Department of Health a DPH inspection until all everything else is. I have to be able to open the next day, so all the other inspections, fire, CO, everything needs to be ready to go. 
Yeah, I'm, I have a feeling when, when we do an interior view, the building is built. This is unusual. Usually we look at things that aren't built. It's built. When you walk through that door and you see something, you're, you're going to, I will likely add something to, um, not likely, but I could see something to add to that safety response document. And, but you've already approved the plan. So it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. All right. Well, so I'll is the condition of my special permit conditioned on the Brigham building meeting some, so you're just inspecting my facility, not the Brigham facility? Right. Yes. Yeah, so so that's inspecting my space. We yeah, can so you're schedule that tomorrow. I mean, that's right. easy. If you're not looking to go into the Brigham I'm building, I'm, it's more that quarter there where you mentioned before that there's a designated place for the cars to yes. park. Yes. And then when you go there, there could be an issue. So you have to figure out what is the overflow issue. Right. Then you walk from that van or truck into that door. I noticed today that there's a uh, there's a there's some obstacles to get into that area. Um, if that delivery person, because it's not the same delivery person, decides to park somewhere else, is there another downspout going into our water supply that maybe that should be covered up mm -hmm. as well? So these are these are things that you see when you walk into the door. I don't expect to see any any. Um, uh, you Brigham Women is a well-respected venue, I, but I don't think it's unreasonable to look to see what's already been built right. to protect the water. So when would the approval be processed then? If, if it's not tonight, it would be the following meeting? The next meeting is July 23rd, so it's a full month away. Yeah. And a, it is a special permit. There is an appeal, a 20-day appeal yeah. period. I mean, typically, this section of the zoning bylaw requires um, comments back from the various departments that you heard from, and, and mostly you rely on the Dedham Westwood Water District, which did right. provide you the report, and they specially asked their consultant, Weston and Sampson, to review, and they and they did provide that report to you. So usually. The last step is the fire department and the, um, the health director go out on their interior and site inspection, and that's where they go through that right. process. What about the uh, the other meeting in July? That doesn't work. We Could were they, looking. Come back for that July meeting. We want to meet with the conservation commission. We haven't. I didn't hear from all of you about an, another meeting. I'm available. When are you available? You have to set the date. Um, so you'd have to, to continue the hearing, you have to vote to continue it to the specific date, time, and place. Yeah, so I don't know, um, Deb, were you available? I like you were, you were away, weren't you? Yeah, but I could probably call in for it. 15th? Yeah. If I'm away, I can still call in for it. I think two, um, two people were available. Uh, so 15. Bill and Chris were available Monday the 15th. I'm available. Monday the 15th. Have you available? Uh, I'm not, but I could Away. probably call in if we need to. Well, this is, we need the uh, four for this, so. Yeah. Did you say Dave? Dave? I mean, um, Chris. So that's available? still, that's, one, two, that's still three three weeks for now. I think. Um, the Monday the 15th. Yeah. Um, Does that work? Yep, so if, if Dave can call in for that meeting. You can call in. I can, um, yeah, I can call in. That works for me. And then, and then Chris could watch the tapes, but it, it's still a, a, it's still a delay uh, right. in the application. Yeah, and this is the first hearing. The first hearing, but it, my recommendation is that you have enough information to vote on this application and close the hearing tonight with conditions for a business that's looking to open and, and, and complete No, I process. understand that, but I think some items came up tonight that, like the, I didn't know that, deli that, that, that the delivery area was um, completely unmarked in the parking lot. And now we have, 
when we saw this hearing before, I wasn't thinking that we were going to have an urgent care um, full set of chemicals mm -hmm. also. So you're dealing with two vendors essentially delivering stuff. So I think we have to do our job and protect our water. So July 15th? July 15th. Yeah. Make a motion to continue the hearing till to July 15th. 7 p.m. in this room. 7 p.m. in the car meeting in this building. Room. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And abstained? So it's four yeses. I'll abstain. Okay. So three yeses, one abstention. So we'll try to coordinate an inspection prior to the next meeting. So I'll. Yes. Yeah, so who, who will I coordinate with you? Yes, coordinate okay. with me, and I'll reach out to you on available times before the next meeting. Preferably for me, it would be like as soon as possible, not tomorrow. Okay. But I think that might be too soon. But Thursday or Friday this week. Okay. And my site visit inside will t take 10 minutes. I just want to walk down the hallways, open up those doors, and. I move that we close. Well, no, we're, we continue. Yeah, we continue. continue this. Thank you. Thank you. And next on the agenda, 690 Canton Street, AT&T Wireless. Application to install wireless antennas, remote radio units, cables, fibers, and equipment on the roof of existing wireless facility. Welcome. Good evening, uh, Michael Dolan from the law firm of Brown Rudnick, here on behalf of the applicant new singular wireless PCS LLC, otherwise known as AT&T. Um, AT&T has an existing wireless telecommunications facility on the roof of the Westwood Business Center uh, building at 690 Canton Street. Um, that building is on a nine and a half acre parcel in the wireless communication overlay district where wireless uh, communications facilities are permitted. Uh, the existing facility we have consists of 12 panel antennas and related equipment. Uh, my client is seeking to address a gap in coverage and some capacity issues that they're running into in this area in Westwood uh, and over uh, to University Station Mall. Um, in order to address that uh, coverage gap, my client is proposing to add three new antennas. Uh, and related equipment as shown in the plans um, as well as slightly um, separate some of the existing antennas so as to provide for better efficiency of the existing antennas when they're a little bit further apart um, that benefits that um, none of the new equipment will be any higher than the existing equipment we have from a land use planning perspective we're glad we have the existing facility upon which uh, to put these new antennas rather than to be proposing a new structure. Uh, I think the um, photo simulations included with our application demonstrate the minimal uh, visual impact of the facility and uh, pursuant to the bylaw we're here for a uh, EIDR approval. Are you done with your presentation? I am. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abby, do we have any? Uh, Abby, do we have any comments from the staff? Um, no additional comments. I had listed out the waivers. Um, I did ask for the compliance certification report that the applicant did provide. Um, was that yesterday or, um, or Friday? Maybe it was. Um, so we did get that certification based on the existing facility and that is um, expected that the new facility will also comply? Correct. And the, the, uh, the submission um, talks about existing conditions and prospective. Uh, the only prospective mitigating me 
measure that needs to take place is uh, just some rooftop signs and that uh, doesn't affect the general public. That's just if someone were working up on the roof, uh, there's a little bit of signage so people wouldn't get in front of the antennas. Most people know that, but that's an OSHA regulation. So okay. other than that, we're a fraction of the FCC limits. Can you go into a little more detail, Abby, about you were saying the with regards to that, what were you um, looking for? Oh, just um, initially it was listed in my um, summary to you as a waiver request, but we did get that. So I did update that um, number six waiver in my report to you that um, we did provide that application submission. Um, so what's before you is the um, wireless communications EIDR. It's a minor facility because it's not, um, it's an existing facility. It's an ex expansion of an existing facility, but it's not increasing um, over 10 feet in height. Um, yeah, so so it, when you say, when, how much higher will they be? Not a, any higher. Okay. It's essentially adding, we have an alpha, beta, and gamma sector, which just means they're pointing in certain directions. We're just effectively adding a delta sector to kind of go down towards uh, University Station and uh, pick up some other areas there, and then there's some other small equipment, but that's the main reason we're doing this. And what is the, what is the increase in, in waves? Like, what is, how is that calculated by? Like, so are you, are you looking to get more, uh, essentially increasing the, the bandwidth of the? Yeah, we're looking to get uh, a new signal to be able to propagate in the direction that we're not really getting now as well as uh, a little bit stronger signal so th and uh, some additional amplifiers so we can uh, meet the data issues um, and demands in that area. There's a ton of people uh, in Westwood using their phones and there's a high demand on data capacity, uh, speeds, things like that. So we're upgrading that facility. Sure. Now, is there anything that uh, the technology on the roof for protect so you, you want the waves to go out and not down correct is there any type of deflector that you can shield so you can put on the roof uh, uh, we really don't need that um, there you know it's designed so that uh, at ground level uh, the exposure limits uh, in comparison to the FCC limit are typically somewhere between two and four and five percent um, of the 100% FCC allowable limit. So it's a fraction of that. And then, as I said, on the rooftop, um, unless you were right in front of the antennas, really like facing you. Yeah, literally go up right next to them yeah. like this. And, yeah. um, hopefully right. people aren't doing that. <laughs> no, I, I drove by there, uh, did a site visit from the outside, and it is uh, nicely covered. You pretty much only see these when you're um, at a certain angle, I found, and it's up on it's up on the hill. Yep, um, it's a great location, actually. Yeah. Wish there were more of them. Right. How much does the additional equipment weigh? Um, each antenna is. Let's see here. Antennas are each about uh, 60 or 70 pounds. Okay. And we, we submitted with our application a uh, structural study. Uh, yeah. There'll be no uh, issues about uh, weight capacity and, bit and loading on that roof. And they take into account snow and oh, yeah. ice. Yep. Okay. Bill, do you have any questions? So I saw one of the draft conditions. You, you don't do you don't paint those, do you? The, we to can match, if, you can. We can if uh, if that's the the board's preference, but uh, they all match the building right now. There's no there's no brick behind it right. really or anything. So if that were the case, we would uh, okay. do even more. But right now it seems like the standard uh, matte metal gray kind of look mm -hmm. is uh, looks just fine. Okay. And Abby, in terms of the conditions, um, the company that came out and did the, what was it, uh, site safe, they made that recommendation about the, um, the compliance. Does that need to be added into the conditions as well for the signage? Um, 
I added, updated today to say number two, projects shall comply with all state and federal requirements, inc including the federal communications guidelines. I thought that would capture the signage request, but we could expand upon yeah, that and say including. That, but to including your point, um, you know, the reason that recommendation is made in that report is because of the FCC guidelines. So it is a catch all like you did, but if you want to expressly reference it, I'm fine with that too. Okay, so, so you can add if you want to reference then. that report and say that we will comply with section, was it 5.2? I think it was section 5.2. It was 5.2, yep. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Dave, do you have any questions? I don't. Any questions about the waivers? Or? Yeah, so should we, why don't we go through the, the waivers? So it's the exterior lighting plan, existing building, uh, traffic study, ex existing building, uh, site plan following full site features. Um, it was fine from the, the parking lot for me. Uh, drainage stormwater report. Abby, have there ever been any reports back from the sewer department? in this area at all? I mean, we've had some heavy rain over the last four months. No, I mean, it's not something you typically require for a roof. Yeah, it was just, it was more curiosity for me, I'm not. Nothing that I've been yeah. um, keeping track of. I figured down in Carby Street, you're gonna hear something, but you haven't, so. Uh, the presentation model uh, is the other waiver and confirmation that the facility complies with all state and federal regulations and standards. So is that, that's what you were speaking of? Yeah, so that's where I, I moved down. I included the um, condition number two, um, catch all about following the FCC guidelines where they called out the signage. Okay, so is that, um, is that uh, up on the screen now or do we have to, oh, I see, okay. condition two. I was thinking waiver two, that's fine. Any questions or comments with regards to the waivers? Okay. Um, I make a motion to um, approve the waivers for the exterior lighting plan, traffic study, site plan following full site features, drainage stormwater report, and presentation model. I have a motion and a second. Why don't I do that over? I hear a motion, do I have a second? Sorry. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Oh, sorry. Um, public comment. So why don't we have public comment and we'll redo the uh, any motions. Anybody from the public? Okay. Um, so you can move. The waivers haven't changed, so if you want to do the motion for it. I make a motion to approve the waivers as discussed. Second. Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, the motion passes four to zero. And the conditions, so we can review those. So they're up on the screen, so at least that's um, all, that, that's the totality of them? There's six of them. Oh, yeah, well, seven. Seven. Oh, seven. Do you want me to read them? So essentially, um, condition number one is kind of a standard condition to comply with the um, project plans and, and complete it in a uh, reasonable time frame. Number two is to comply with all the state and federal regulations, including the FCC guidelines. And you'd like to add language about the um, signage. Mm -hmm. um, three is about uh, minimizing that visual impact. Um, this is a standard condition you have about um, matching um, the equipment. Um, four is to be notified if the if facility were to be abandoned or discontinued, to be notified um, in writing within 30 days, I'm sorry, 90 days. And then condition number five is that this approval is good for two, um, two years, and then a copy of this decision shall be kept on, on site during construction. Yeah. 
make a motion to approve the application as stated with the conditions as stated by Abby with the addition of um, section 5.2 of the site safe report. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? It passes four to zero. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you. Thank you to Abby for processing our. She does Make a great motion job. To close the hearing. I have a motion to close the hearing. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing's closed. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. So we're we'll move on. Move on to other business and administrative items. Uh, so the first bulleted item, Abby, is the endorsement of Westwood Estates subdivision modification approved on May 14th, 2019. Yes. So at your May meeting, you approved. Um, this was the discontinuance of Hedro Lane, the old Hedro Lane, that um, dead end street that was um, discontinued by town meeting. You approved the modified subdivision plan. Um, that was um, the decision went to the town clerk for a 20 day appeal period, uh, which was the end of the appeal period was yesterday. So the town clerk has to uh, has certified the plan that the appeal period ended. Um, so you're, you can now endorse this plan. This is what you approve, but this is the sheet that actually gets recorded at the Registry of Deeds to effectuate those new lot lines. Um, in that new configuration. So you should. Yes, um, and should we do it? Do you want to do it now? Do have a Sharpie? Uh, yes, sure. And we decide in here. And then. Date the top one? Uh, yes, if you do. Um, yep. Yep. 625. Thanks. Uh, so, next, Abby, is the review of town meeting timelines and zoning articles. Yes. So, well, I didn't prepare um, I have so essentially when you look at the town meeting schedule you uh, work backwards from when town meeting is um, town meeting in the fall is always the um, second Monday of the month unless it falls on a holiday in that case it goes to the next day which happens here. So I think town meeting um, in the fall would be, where did I write that down? Oh, um, November, November 12th would be the date. Um, the select board, they usually open the warrant in August and close it in September. Um, that's according to the charter. There are certain time frames. So it's usually um, closes sometime in mid-September depending on uh, their meeting schedule. So it hasn't been announced. Um, if they're having a town meeting yet, we don't always know if we're going to have a town meeting. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. The spring town meeting, the annual town meeting, that's always the first Monday in May. So working backwards from town meeting. So usually used in July or August, usually, in, usually at your August meetings, you'll um, discuss zoning articles. Um, for when the warrant closes, they put out an announcement um, for a request for articles. So it's usually a description of what articles. Um, so that gets submitted, so they review it, and they decide if there's going to be a town meeting. Once the warrant is closed, that's 
then um, forward it on to the Finance and Warrant Commission, and then the Planning Board begins scheduling their hearings. The Planning Board has to hold a hearing on all zoning amendments. And then there's time frames of when those public hearings are. Um, it has to be at least um, notice in the newspaper at least two weeks in advance. But because the way our newspaper is, um, you know, a weekly newspaper, we do it about three and a half, four weeks in advance. So usually one month from the time the warrant closes. So usually in our timeline, ours, um, from their meetings that we already have, I think typically at your August 13th meeting you would um, discuss zoning articles and get ready to submit them depending on when that warrant opens. So the select board meeting usually early September you would submit it for that meeting. So in this case most likely your August 13th meeting. The Finance and Warrant Commission they have developed their schedule recently. Theirs is based on fiscal year. Yours you usually do kind of by calendar year. So they, the Finance and Warrant Commission, they have their initial meeting scheduled for Tuesday, September 17th. That is an initial review, so that's usually right after the warrant has closed, and that's where they invite um, the article um, sponsors to attend and just kind of summarize the article. Then they have Tuesday, October 1st, the Finance and Warrant Commission asks for the article sponsors to come back again and discuss the articles a little bit more. And then the Finance and Warrant Commission, they have their public hearing on all warrant articles scheduled for Tuesday, October 15th. So that's sort of the big hearing. That's where they notify all residents in town. That's where the full planning board comes and presents to the Finance and Warrant Commission. Um, you also have meetings scheduled for Tuesday, the 17th of September and October 1st. So those dates can you repeat that again? Uh, to September September 17th yeah. and October 1st. Those are Tuesdays. Okay. Those are your regularly scheduled meetings okay. as well. So there is a conflict there. So when I did our I did our schedule, I, I kind of um, usually meet on Tuesdays. So you have a limited number of Tuesdays. There was yeah, some holidays the, in there. There's one meeting that that there's we, a there's a conflict we changed to a Monday in I think November I think because of an election is it I think we Might is be. it that we have a meeting before the FinCom meeting or oh there's one at the at, on the same date that's what it is it, there's two so their schedule on September 17th and October 1st are at the same time and place as our meetings it's a joint meeting not a joint meeting um yeah, yeah, no, it it's just a conflict right now. <laughs> not you, not usually, because oh, usually wild. it's. Um, so when is the joint meeting that we attend? Oh, that come? that's Tuesday, October fifteenth. That's the public hearing. So that's usually when the full planning board we go and present to the finance and warrant commission. And that's the first time that we appear. Yes, okay. in the in the fall, there's only usually one set of a public hearing. In the spring, they usually do two. Usually early March and then at the third week in March or, or fourth week. So there's two sets of public hearings usually in the spring. Spring is usually a larger town, town meeting warrant. But the selectmen could cancel town meeting. So yeah, so yeah, not, what, what we don't do know they, if they have. Is it September or when do they decide that? Um, I think the charter says they have to decide by the end of September. So it's usually, I think, I think it's usually around their second meeting in September, which I don't know if they've set that date yet. So right now, I, I think I would like to work on what we started, which was the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan, this is a good to go, time to... Does it have to go to town meeting, though? It doesn't have to go to town meeting. It doesn't follow the same process. Um, it doesn't have to go to town meeting. The planning board has to um, approve it. But as you talked about, as we talked about a little bit last meeting, I think we'd like to bring it town, to town to bring it to t present it to town meeting. It doesn't have to be fall town meeting. I, I, I would expect it would take longer to do the comprehensive plan. So most likely it would be spring town meeting. So just getting back to this, so July 23rd, that's when we come up with the the titles of what we would like. 
Yes. I think there's, there's a few that I have carried over from. Yes, at least announcing what, um, usually it's a title and a brief description of what you're looking to do. Okay. And then, or, and see, it makes sense to start looking into the, the bylaws to see what, what text needs to be changed and this, that, and the other. So when is that? That's what, that would be the August 13th to have that language. Um, Agree on the articles to be submitted. So again, yes. August 13th So August is 13th, that's when you would want to submit all your, your listing of articles. So it could be... And how be, detailed does that get? It doesn't have to be too detailed, but soon after. So usually, um, so your public hearing, if you, for your, and we would have, um, you know, based on this timeline, your public hearing. You would want to have your planning board zoning amendment public hearing prior to the fin comes on, on October 15th. That way you present all that you've heard at your hearing. So I would expect your he public hearing on the zoning amendments to be October 1st. Yeah, so so would it would be early September where you we submit the legal notice. So the legal notice, that's where you have a substantial draft. So you want to have the language. Is that legal? Notice? It's um, is that us? Um, it's about a month before the public hearing, so it would be early September. So it's usually yeah. early September, that first week. Yeah, so September. we already start running out of time. Uh, so I think it behooves us to identify what they are and to start working on the language for whatever, if there are any, what they're going to be. Because I think what happened last time is that we we ran out of time. I think we started, the initial discussions didn't get into enough detail early on. So then we, by the time we got to the specifics, it was our backs were against the wall. And then, and then FinCom was, uh, I, I understandably, wondering when they were going to see language. So I'd, I'd like to get moving on any of those when we can, along with the uh, with anything, any other business. Great. The fall town meeting is a much quicker, shorter timeline yeah. than the spring. This um, the spring, it is a um, usually they open the warrant in December and it closes early January. Any fewer meetings, like one in you know, yeah. July. So it's a it's a lot less. So. It's a shorter time frame to do a lot. So if any planning board members have ideas. Um, get going on the language that you like to um, share and that makes Abby's job a lot easier. Right, so that would be the next meeting which now we just changed to July 15th. Well, we still unless have our July still, 23rd. Unless you want to meet in both meetings? Yeah, the, the, okay. yeah, the, the 15th the and the 20th. Yeah, because the other two I think you're going to be dialing in on the 15th so to talk about warrant articles over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No, yeah, I think we should just just keep, keep it standing. July thirteenth, also. July twenty third. Twenty third, the fifteenth and the twenty third. And then we just have to make sure that it gets in the paper, so that it's clearly identified. Or is that? I, what I want to yeah. do is I'd I'd rather start the process, so that we start having the hearing, so that we don't run out of time, or if a meeting ends up getting canceled for whatever reason, because like you said, it's a shorter season in the fall. Yes. So, yeah, it usually is you pretty much want to have the whole legal notice with your draft um, specific changes a full month before your hearing. And the hearing so is that on would be October 13th. October 1st. October 1st. So well, the it essentially, on, the, um, so the first week in September. So we need everything September 1st. Right? Yeah, September essentially 1st. because you want the legal ad to capture what yes, you're exactly two, what you're doing. We have two doing. meetings to do that, the 23rd and the 13th. So again, if you have any language, board members, start working on it and then uh, share with Abby, share with the board so that we have, because it's a big burden meeting. on you and as board members, we should be working on this stuff. So if there's something that uh, gets moving, that'll help us. And again, then who knows if there's, they, they have to make a decision on the meeting anyway. Okay. Abby, thank you for pulling together yeah. these dates on that summary. That's very helpful. Uh, 
anything else with regards to uh, to that? Um, nope, I don't think so. Okay. Anything? Okay. So next one, comprehensive plan update. Yeah, so that's where, um, after your last meeting, I, um, the consultant did provide um, a final report. You have in front of you um, a summary of, essentially a summary of the May 18th vision session, kind of explaining what happened, kind of summarizing the day and what went into the day, and then a report with a preliminary um, draft of goals and objectives um, up until that point. So it includes what came out of that day, May 18th, um, from the people at the vision session and the survey. Yep. So um, they did uh, review the survey. Um, so this is used as a, a draft for the committee um, to be, you know, some new information along with the survey to go forward. So I did contact them. I gave them your contact info, so you should be hearing from them soon about arranging um, times to meet. So I recommend meeting in the, um, the teams, the little sub subcommittees, the, each section to um, start meeting as early as you can this summer and um, continuing with interviews, so are they gonna be outreach, in, dra in, in drafts, kind of putting together some drafts. I think the summer is a good time for you and the committee members to work on this because it's not as, you don't have as many applications as you do in the winter. So I'd recommend, just aren't as many um, If you don't, you don't do it, it doesn't meetings. get done. So yeah, I recommend this it. time for the committee members to Work so are they going to reach out to us? How, I, are they, how have they been I asked instructed? them to, and now I'm, going to, I'm starting to outreach them individually, and so they'll be contacting you. Thank soon. you for doing that. Um, and then I would expect the committee. They'll probably meet. Um, I would expect maybe end of August, early September. They'll probably meet as a group, and um, I think they had talked before about having a, a public um, information session or like an open house. Um, where people can come in and review the draft sections um, prior to coming to planning board meetings. So then they would, that, that would happen, and then they would come, and then we'd try to work um, to have them start attending section at a time, you know, subject area at a time, come into planning board meetings. So that's why I think your fall, I envision your fall uh, meetings be focused on comprehensive plan. Like, we, we'd have to schedule it depending on what we have, but it would be nice, you know, if we have an agenda where we focus entirely on comprehensive plan or one subject area at a time or maybe two subject areas at a time. And do we have any idea of what applications are coming down the pipe? Um, Fox Hill Village, um, the, um, the former Clark House, yep. um, that they're going to propose demolishing that yep. building to construct a new one. So they're hoping to file for your August meeting. Um, so I, I would expect that would probably go August into September. Yeah. Um, and that's the only application I know of um, right now. And then as we talked a little bit about the modification to the Reynolds Farm in July. But I, we don't have any other applications right now. So your winter and spring is the busiest time at the start of the construction season. So that's why I recommend focusing on the comprehensive yeah. plan summer and fall. Uh, does anybody have any questions with regards to comprehensive plan? No. Uh, and then the re-signing of 11 Stone Meadow? Oh yeah, so last meeting you did sign um, an a &R for 11 Stone Meadow. Yes. There's two sheets. One goes to land court and one goes to the registry and I think they accidentally submitted the wrong ones Can to the wrong place. They can't get them back once you've submitted it. So they, um, it just goes into the system, I guess. So they've asked for it to be um, re-signed. The one, or this is the one for, I think, is this one? Oh yeah, oh sorry, we can Nothing's turn, paper. oh no, yep, it's the mylar, so we just turn that around. Um, okay. Do we need to do the other dates on the bottom? Um, we could, oh, I see. What, oh, what we've done before is I put voted on the date you voted, then I wrote re-signed, I wrote re-signed on June 25th. Voted on June 11th, so signed it. And 
I did not review the minutes, so I wouldn't mind putting off any approval of that. All right. So upcoming meetings, we have the the Monday. Is it the Monday, July fifteenth? Monday, Monday, July fifteenth. Yep. So that would be for the partners. July twenty third, August thirteenth, mm -hmm. September third, September seventeenth, October first, mm -hmm. and October twenty second. <clears throat> and the conservation commission will be at the fifteenth. I'm going to invite them. I haven't con I hadn't confirmed with them yet. So after tonight, I'll let them know that that's. What kind of a site visit do we need for this? I mean, I drove by it, but I didn't go on it because it's private property. So right. Um, do you want to try to coordinate a site visit, maybe right before the meeting? That would be good. Definitely. Yeah, that's good practice. Um, like six thirty on the fifteenth. Remember we can aim for. Oh. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's well, that's not going to work because they're going to be calling in. Oh yeah. Call in. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll we should arrange the meeting agenda so that we deal with uh, university first uh -huh. and Reynolds second. Mm -hmm. I want to get okay. uh, any questions with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just trying to think of when we can do a site visit. Okay. So should we communicate? Uh, let me know when you're available. Um, can we just let them know that we're? Well, well, what are the issues? Let me. Uh, it. Um, who can who can show us the issues? Why are we? Let meeting? me coordinate. Um, the reason you're, this plan requires a modification was because the site work, which mostly had to do with drainage and landscaping, some of the um, grading um, wasn't completed as the constructions of the units um, were being occupied, but construction of the site was still ongoing. Um, so over the last year year and a half. Um, we've reviewed the plans with staff internally, with Public Works, with um, Beta Group Phil. Um, our engineer has uh, looked at and made recommended changes because there had been, let's say, flooding is what. Um, so Beta would be the best to do the, yeah. the visit with. Or their project engineer, um, we've worked closely with too, so I can I can coordinate with. Um, I want with whoever has the most knowledge. I can mm -hmm. summarize, just walk the site, and explain to us what it, what we're looking at and what it should look like. Okay. All right. I'll try to. I guess I'll coordinate. Could yeah. they do it Thursday or Friday of this week? Yeah, Friday. Friday works. I think. What is your schedule like, Deb? Um, I think it's open. Yeah. I'm a yeah, paper person this on week, the calendar. Next week. This is Brown's Farm, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next week is um, And so we've been July up there week. before. Bill hasn't. I right. Know, but that, that but was we did about, do that. Was that about a year ago? Uh, no. Yeah. A year or two ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the Brown's Farm situation. So things have changed. Since, yes. Uh, <laughs> we just have a settlement agreement. <laughs> so that's um, one. Uh, uh, you might, we should let uh, Steve Olenoff know about this visit as well as an associate member. He's been, he was there at all the other visits and all so we can observe what's changed because the first time around um, you know we board approved uh, location for a drain pipe or whatever we went out there and right. it was not there and it was it was out and it ended up in somebody's front yard where there's a nice little pool forming yeah, so the drain the drain was higher than the pooling so it, so so anyways Friday would be great if yeah. that's possible Friday morning Friday morning works for me, if it's after ten, it works for me. Okay. Yeah, late, late, okay. Late, late, late. Okay. Yeah, morning. So eleven. Okay. I have standing appointments in the morning. Okay. I I will check, but if eleven on Friday works for you, yeah, 11 I can suggest that time and see if that works with um. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to you on that one. Well then, would we have time to think to then go over to um. Partners, if that worked for them, after, yeah, to do sure. both. Yeah. So I can check on that too. So I'll, I'll check with both the owners and the the 
If you could, so you're saying like 11, if you could do it at 12, that would be better for Oh, me. okay. 12, 12 o'clock, okay. Cool. Abby, is there any way to get the links to that whole Reynolds farm? Yes, I have to provide them to you. I, okay. It probably won't be, uh, yeah, I might have them by Friday, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I'll get them to you. Time. Yes, I will. I just, I don't have them yet, but I'll get them soon. You'll have them. How, how long ago was it? A few years ago? 2012, it was approved. Yeah, it was a special permit, so it had been ongoing, and all the units except for one is occupied. So we've been holding up that last unit until the site work. Well, we've reached the end of our agenda, and we're within our best practices of ending on time, which allows us to have fresh thoughts. Can I just ask one question before we end? Abby, um, 200 University, I was driving by there, they have a dumpster uh -huh. out in front. Is that supposed to be screened or covered? Because it's not. Um, That's that Wisconsin cheese building? I think they were doing demolition. Okay. Not for the uh, demolition, but it's not a permanent dumpster, right? It's or a big like dumpster. a construction dumpster. I, I don't know, it's a big dumpster. I was just curious because no. I saw all the other ones like uh -huh. um, urgent. The urgent care facility has one covered. Yeah. Another building has it covered, and theirs was wide open. They haven't gone through. Um, you approve their application in the winter. I want to say January or February, and they have not submitted for a, a building permit yet for that plan. But they were doing, I think, interior demolition. So they have a construction dumpster that might be, but not a not the permanent dumpster yet. And the condos look nice too. Yeah, so they're looking to open um, the first building pretty soon. And then well, we've reached the end of our agenda. Do we have a motion to close? Motion to close the meeting. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor of closing the meeting? Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstained? Close the meeting.